Coast Metro Lax Series. We are live here from Paul VI Catholic High School in Fairfax, Virginia, as the Paul VI Panthers take on St. Mary's Riken. Paul Frommel here alongside of Cavill Maddox and Leah Reich down on the field. And Cav, let's just get right into it. What are your keys to this game? The keys to the game are, uh, are, are, are going to be the Paul VI defense versus the St. Mary's Riken attack. Uh, the attack is loaded for St. Mary's Riken with uh, Matt Yates and Nathan Blondino. It's going to be a challenge for the Paul VI defense. Also, the goalie play of Zach Toole for Paul VI and Gary Ignacic for uh, St. Mary's Riken. Two outstanding goalies. Someone's got to play a little better than the other one for their team to win. Uh, Paul VI coaches told me they, they want to put heavy pressure on tonight. So that's a key to my key to the, key to the game. Can St. Mary's Reichen handle that constant pressure and be disciplined and maintain possession? Again, folks, we are live here at Paul VI Catholic High School. A huge WCAC matchup for boys lacrosse. Cab, tell me about the impact players for these teams. Well, for St. Mary's Reichen, you have uh, In the name of the Father, Connor and of Summers. The Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have Connor Summers, who uh, who's having a great season. I, I believe he's leading the team in points. He's a uh, senior, all WCAC player. Wilmar Dennis, midfielder, junior, who's committed to Loyola. Uh, Nathan Blondino, junior, who's committed to West Point. Outstanding attackman. Uh, on defense, you have Andrew Morgan, senior, going to play at Dickinson College. And uh, Matty Yates on attack for uh, Please for St. Mary's Reich, another key key player for the game tonight. And finally, Jack the face-off specialist, Preston Dabbs, who's going to play at Salisbury, one of the top Division three programs in the country. So St. Mary's Reich and from Leonardtown, Maryland, as we're about to get underway here at Paul VI High School. So you have uh, Paul VI standout players are Will Biaggi, uh, junior, committed to play for Michigan. You have Nick Carpenter, who, who's a uh, big-time finisher for for the uh, Panthers on at the midfield. Logan Onion actually is not dressing tonight. He's committed to Delaware. Uh, and that's gonna be a, a huge loss for the Panthers this evening. Ethan Pally, the long stick midi committed to Duke, is a uh, junior. He's surely an impact player. Then you, then you have number 24, Connor Murphy, who leads the team in points with 25 points on the attack uh, to round it out for Paul VI. Folks, for all your high school sports stories, game coverage, videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com, a product of the Washington Post. Allmetsports.com, every school, every sport, all the time. Now, I mentioned those impact players, but, but uh, not, not all of them are, are expected to have an amazing game. Who, who's going to have the biggest game? We'll, we'll, we'll decide who wins. Is it going to be Blondino? Is it going to be Yates, Dabs, Pally? Murphy or Carpenter, we'll, we'll have to see here. All right, Mad Lax. <laughs> Here's the lineup, starting lineup for St. Mary's right in. Number one, Connor Summer, senior midfield. Checking out here the starters for both of these squads, PVI and St. Mary's Riken. And Cavill, two-time All-Americans, so you, you know a thing or two about lacrosse. Well, I've been around it my whole life. I learned, learned to play in uh, fifth grade and... and been fortunate to have coached college and, and high school, and um, I run an all-star program for Mad Lax players in the area, for 300 of the best boys players in the area. So yeah, it's, it's, my, it's my life, you could say. Let's take a look at the WCAC standings here and early on in the season, and no surprise, both of these teams are high on the list. Yeah, you have Gonzaga, Gonzaga is the team to beat. Everyone's going for Gonzaga, two-time defending WCAC champions. But Paul the Sixth and St. Mary's Reichen, I've got them right behind. Whoever wins this game will be the second best team, in my opinion, in the league. Uh, and then they can focus their sights on Gonzaga. And Cab, we were talking before the game, and you had, had some very nice things to say about PVI. You said this may be the best team they've ever had. 
for sure. They have an outstanding Let's junior class. Their four two, committed uh, Division One players are all juniors, one, and Will they only have four Godwin. seniors on Number the team. Um, so they're going to be good this year and next. Face off one by St. Mary's Reich, and actually scooped up by St. Mary's Reich. Number 52, Reichen going right to left in the navy blue uniforms. PVI in the goal, and a shot on goal, and a save immediately for PVI. Zach Toole with the save. PVI now on the attack. That's a great start for Zach in the cage right there. What, what a stop. That was a rip. Great bounce shot, and he stayed big. Ryan Lamb now with the ball for PVI. Sends it out up top to number five, Nick Carpenter. Coach, Carp Ge Coach Geller told me that uh, he wants to slow it down on offense. It's not their style, uh, but they've had so many injuries, including Logan, uh, that they want to hold the ball. Uh, we'll see if they have the ability to change their style of offense. And PVI just swinging it around. So again, you, you see they, they are being very patient here in the early going. And here comes Carpenter looking for an opening. Can't find it there. Great defense by Riken, And they're going to swing it around to the left-hand side. Another drive thwarted by Riken. So early on here, PVI looking for an opening. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're attacking the short stick. St. Mary's Riken is playing with three shorties. That's... Uh, Romar on there we go, the, uh, shot and goal for PVI, assist from Lamb. The first goal for PVI, first goal, goal of the game. Connor Murphy. Connor Murphy credited with the goal. That was a great dodge and feed inside there. Uh, excellent placement on the shot actually, down corner. That's always uh, a great way to start. First shot, first goal. So you see being very patient, finding their open. They find it, first shot on goal. A goal for PVI and they lead one nothing here. 10-39 remaining, just getting underway here. And a face off one by PVI and that's Lamb. Excuse me, that's Carpenter. Carpenter racing down the left hand side of the field down the far sideline, gives it up. Now PVI again going, trying to set up their offense. Nowhere, nowhere there for PVI, but we do have a flag. Now behind the goal, looking for the assist, a shot, and goal again, number 24. Looks like, looked like Murphy again. Yeah, that was a Goal by number 24, Connor Murphy. And it was Murphy again with the goal. Fullerton gets the assist number two, the senior attack. That was a great catch and finish. He caught it high, dipped the stick, and fired it low before uh, Garrett Ignostic in the goal could, could get his eye on that. So Connor Murphy, the, the Rutgers recruit, uh, last year second team all WCAC. So you're seeing the stars shine here early for PVI. First tool makes a nice save, and they go back and score two quick goals on St. Mary's Reich. And so PVI, the home team here, having a good go of it early on. Yeah, and, and, uh, and what a start for the league score, Connor. That's gonna that's gonna bode well for us tonight. He's got 25 points. He's already he's already got two points. So you, if you're Coach Southern over um, on the St. Mary's Riken side, what are you hoping for here with this possession? Long, controlled. They, their first possession wasn't really a possession. Uh, it was a broken play, and they just made a great save. They're gonna they're gonna possess here. Now Riken has six people who can score. They don't rely on one guy or two guys or three. Look at the pressure of that pole assist. They're doubling it right away. Look at this pressure. Great job there by the PVI defense. Number 14 takes the shot and it's wide right. Number 14, that's Nathan Blondino, the junior attack with a shot on goal. So two shots there for, for Riken. They're, they're, still, they're still man down. That's, that's why Paul Six is able to double here freely. There's still a few seconds left in the penalty for St. Mary's Riken. Um, Number 11 for Riken. Yep, still man down. Guy still in the box coming out soon. So PVI taking advantage of having the man advantage. And again, nothing doing. You might get a turnover here, and you do. PVI trying to clear, and here, they, here comes PVI again. That's Carpenter showing off his speed, splits the defense. He's going to take a shot high and right. So Carpenter taking, taking his first shot still be PVI possession. A great job on defense. Obviously, Riken with with one man down, but PVI showing, showing some nice defense. Yeah, the pressure leads to transition. It's gonna be, looks like we got time out here early by, by Riken. We gotta settle down. Sit on the booth. Okay, so if you're, again, I mentioned Coach Southern from Riken, 
Not a very good possession that last time. So what is he saying to his team? Well, I mean, they, they got a foul. They've got a foul against them already. They gave up a, they gave up a uh, penalty. Uh, they have two, two very average at best shots. Uh, they're winning. They've won two out of three face-offs, so they have opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see if they can get it back here. This is the, I think they're back to even six on six right now uh, off the timeout. Uh, Reichen's, Reichen's got to pick it up defensively as well. They've given up, they've, they've given up three shots, two goals. Hey, since 1997, Mad Lax is the cross for D.C., Maryland, and VA families. Check out MadLax.com to learn all about tryouts for D.C. area's most competitive summer all-stars program in summer camps for boys and girls ages 7 to 18. About to get underway here, but visit one of three retail stores and mention Metro Lax Series to receive a 15% discount. Visit MadLax.com and as always, play with passion. 8.15 remaining here with PVI up to nothing. Sorry, 8.55 remaining here. PVI is still man up. The penalty is not released yet. So PVI on offense again, already leading 2-0. They're going to give it to Carpenter up top. He's going to swing it left, looking for an opportunity. And a shot on goal, wide left. Reichen's got the back up there. So Reichen will take over possession here. This is a long penalty. I don't know, I think it was just a minute, but it feels like it's been a lot longer than that. Yeah, Reichen down 2 nothing with that penalty. They can't seem to get momentum in their rolling in their favor. Reichen will clear and now go into offense. Nice job on defense by the long stick for PVI. He's going to clear it himself. Assist. Oh, oh nice save. Should have been a goal. Ignacic, the, the talented goalkeeper for Reichen with a nice save. And here comes Reichen now with an opportunity. Shot in high, number 18 for Reich. And Matt Yates, the junior attack, he had a golden opportunity there, Cab. All right, well, there's two shots by each attackman on each team who missed easy ones. They both should have finished that, and they're both a little upset with themselves. Previously, that was a great takeaway and uh, knocked the ball out of his stick, stick out of his hands by Ethan Pally, the long stick committee going to Duke. There's Con uh, Connor Summers. He swings it out right, his okay. teammate. Finally, all even. So again, now we're all even, so Reichen gonna try to take advantage here with even odds, number 14 with the ball, it's Blondino. Pass goes wide, the big mistake there by Reichen. I think Matt Yates is a little nervous. He missed that easy goal, he doesn't usually miss those. He's an outstanding finisher, uh, and he just took his eye off the ball there. All right, so uh, we see Carpenter with the ball here. Carpenter been uh, Keeping possession in the early going. Then they give it over to Tool. Mm. Tool's gonna step out and pass it off and quickly retreat. Nice job on defense. Good Double line. teaming 25. Loose ball picked up by number 18 for Riken Yates. Yates with the ball. And he'll great. swing it on right. That was a great ride there by St. Mary's Riken. Doubled the ball in the corner here and took it away. St. Mary's with possession, number 14, Blondino with the ball. He'll swing it over to number 11 for Riken. Dan Long. So Long now. Mic check. Okay, we're gonna go to Leah, ready? Dan Long's got a short stick and he's an attackman. He's, he's gotta take advantage of that. If they're gonna not. All right, we have Leah Reich down on the field. Leah, you have a report for us. Hey guys, everything's going uh, pretty crazy down here. Coach Bowler at the beginning of the game, he said we need to win this face-off. We need to get the first goal. They didn't win the face-off. They did manage to get the first two goals. And uh, the coach for St. Reich, St. Mary Riken was pretty heated out there at the first timeout. So we'll see if they can uh, be quick, get their act together, and uh, you know, bring us back up here. So back to you all. All right, thanks, Lee and Cab. A big penalty here. So yeah, Dan Long went to the cage and just um, he drew a foul, probably a high hit. Uh, they're calling a hold. Call on a hold. hold. Okay, 30 seconds. PBI, PBI down 30 seconds. So Riken now here with the advantage, with the ball, trying to come back. Uh, 619 remaining here. Good opportunity for Riken. They have a lot of shooters. Watch out for number five, Romar Dennis. He shoots at high 90s. So now Riken looking for an opportunity, uh, swinging around, trying to be patient. 
keep on swinging it around as quick as they can. So quick, nice quick passing, trying to find that opening. Now behind the net, swinging it back out right. So looking for an opportunity and a shot and score. Romar Dennis with a bullet. Pass Tool and St. Mary's Riken is on the board. That's what I was talking about. If he can get his shot, the kid shoots the ball high 90s and he did. That was actually underhand. A little awkward, but he, he beat him with speed and perfect off hip location shot. And Kev, you mentioned Romar Dennis before the game and I was waiting to see him uh, show himself. You see just the bullet pass Tool and put St. Mary's Riken on the board. 555 remaining, 2-1. PVI, the home team. Hey, for all your high school sports stories, game coverage videos, photo galleries, and recruiting news, visit allmetsports.com, a product of Washington Post. Allmetsports.com, every school, every sport, all the time. Fight for the ball at the middle of the field, and we have another flag. It's gonna be another foul on uh, Reichen. This is already the third penalty here in less than seven minutes. Yeah, okay, we were talking before the game, not really a, a marquee rivalry, but it's getting there, PVI Riken. Well, it's an interesting fact is um, St. Mary's Riken has never lost to Paul VI. And the coach that told me that was the, was the Paul VI coach. So we'll see, what, see if he can change that long, beat that long streak tonight. This is, as you mentioned, a different PVI team this year, a very talented PVI team this year, and they are on offense doing swinging the ball around, looking for an opening. They still lead 2-1. We're going 3-3 formation to a 1-4-1. One, one. We got a wide open shot. We got shot. a shot and high. Wide open shot there. Good luck on the man up. Two so that's, that's, a, a, that's the second time they've had a nice oh, look, a nice team. opportunity, has PVI, and they've just missed. Yeah, you know, good goalie to make you miss sometimes. Sometimes you try to pick a corner. It's okay to miss. Carpenter with a shot oh. and wide left. That's backed up, so it's okay five, to miss that. Nick Perfectly Carpenter. okay, as long as it's a smart shot. You mentioned the St. Mary's Reich and goalkeeper Ignacic. Tell me about what makes him such a special goalie. He's, he's exceptionally quick. He, he hasn't uh, picked it up yet or shown that yet, but we'll see it. We'll see it. His hands are amazing. He's got great feet. Um, he's one of the best sophomore goalies, surely in the area, might, might be one of the best in the country. Chang with the shot for PVI goes way wide, wide left. PVI re retains possession. They lead 2 1 here, 4 58 remaining in the first quarter. And Paul the Six is using a, a 1 4 1 formation, which is a great man up formation, active inside uh, with the crease. Ball behind the net, looking for an opportunity. Ball back out to Carpenter. Carpenter swings it left, back to Carpenter. They take it right, looking for the opening, and there's a shot and a goal. Number 24 again, Connor Murphy. Goal by number 24, Connor Murphy. Connor Murphy with the hat trick Picked early on. Number 25, Justin Chang. Justin Chang, who had just uh, took his first shot on goal, gets the assist. So Connor Murphy, the junior attack, with three goals already. Yeah, and two on man up. He plays the man up inside high on the 141 very well. He's crafty in there and gets open. It doesn't need a lot of space, it looks like, to get off an accurate shot. He has two almost identical shots to the it's low left corner. Face off one by PVI. So now Donald leading 3 1. Got that and a, a wild pass scooped up, scooped back up by PVI. Not yet, scooped back up by Riken. Long stick number 49 for Riken scoops it up. That's Troy Mendenhall. First turnover, actually, of the entire game by Paul the Six. Ignacic swings it's it out. One forced turnover. Back to Ignacic. This is where Garrett's smart, too, on the clears. And we are here four minutes remaining here in the first quarter. PVI three, St. Mary's Riken two, early on in this WCAC matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live here at PVI High School in Fairfax, Virginia. St. Mary's Riken now with the ball, looking to, looking to uh, chip into that 3-1 lead for PVI. There's Dennis with that hard shot. Can't find anything there. Great double team by the Panthers. That's the matchup I want to see. That's two top top dog Division One players. Number Open two, shot. Number 22, Ethan Rally guarding number five, Romar Ethan Dennis Miller for Riken. 
Great job on defense. Fast break. An opportunity for the Panthers. Oh, and the pass just goes high. They had that opportunity. Threw it away. Threw it away. So you see, even though PVI is leading 3-1 here in the early going, they've missed some opportunities. Yeah, that was a pure fast break. A four on three is a pure fast break. You don't get too many of those a game. And as an attackman, you want to finish those 90% of the time or more. Summers passes on to Brandenburg. Brandenburg now with the ball. Tripped up at midfield, loses the ball. We do have a flag out on the field though. Unfortunate, like inadvertent trip, but you got to call it. Set, aim down for one minute. Go to the booth, talk to the camera, to the camera. Ready? Here we go. All right, so here, 3-1 here in the first quarter. PVI leading, but an opportunity for St. Mary's Riken. So, Kevin, in the early going, what has made PVI get this advantage? Um, well, they're finishing man ups. I mean, there's no, this is the fifth man up of the game already, second for, uh, second for Riken. And uh, Riken's got a potent offense with a lot of good shooters. Romar had a nice whip from high earlier, number five. We'll see who gets a shot here. Here's a close shot. Shot number 15, bounce off the crossbar. Number 15 for Riken with the shot. That's Garrett Wason, the junior midi. Yeah, Garrett's having a great year. He's established himself as a first line, solid midfielder out there. And he's having a great year according to Coach uh, John Sabe. A near miss there for Riken. They still have the ball, moving it around. Number 14 now. Paul the Six is doing a five-man rotation on defense. Big hit there on hey, Blindino. And Tool with the save. I was gonna but say another that. turnover by PVI. Near turnover. Loose ball. Ball still loose. Scooped up by PVI. And an opportunity here. A whistle down on the field. 148 here remaining at PVI. 3 1 Panthers. Yeah. Riken now with the ball. It was a loose ball off sides against Paul the Sixth. All even. All even. No, extra man's over. Seems like for, for most of this first quarter, it seems like we haven't been all even. Yeah, it's been sloppy. This is the matchup I'm talking about, two D1s. And Dennis loses the handle, gets it back. Ball now still down. Scrum chasing for the ball, and we have a flag. And it's gonna go against PVI. So loose ball hold, and then we have a flag after the fact. Seems like the one of the players is getting a little chippy with the ref, and the ref uh, took exception to it. Yeah, I think um, number 27, Jack McGuire said something on the loose ball call. Well, when the whistle blew, the, you can see the PVI players believe the foul would have been on Dennis, but when it went against PVI, they, they got a little upset. You gotta keep your mouth quiet though. That was just a, not that big of a call. And now the, now it's a huge call against man down again. It's a six man penalty in the first quarter. Just mentioned that we were all even and that did not last long. So Riken here with a golden opportunity, 118 remaining here in the first quarter. They are down 3-1. Hey, the Washington Post Metro Lax series. You are watching live the second game in the Washington Post Metro Lax series. It's a series of 10 to 12 live video broadcasts that are streamed at WashingtonPost.com. Of course, if you're watching that, you know that. And they're, they're viewable on your computer, your mobile device, your phone, your tablet, your iPad, anything. You can watch them anywhere. Watch your favorite players here in this Metro Lax series from anywhere. Of course, we are streaming live. Yeah, it is great for the area, Washington, D.C. I think, as far as I know, this, these are the first live lacrosse games that have been talked about. This is the second one that we've done, and a lot of people have a, really, really liked it so far. Hey, look, St. Mary's Reich, and they hail from Leonardtown, Maryland. Hey, you can't make the trip out here to Fairfax, Virginia. Turn on a Washington, or log on to WashingtonPost.com. You're watching it live. You're listening to my wonderful voice, Cab Maddox here, Leo Reich. I want to thank Mad Lax for their sponsorship. Mad Lax is making this happen. Big penalty here. Riken player down on the field. That's number 34, Riken. That's Brandenburg. Taken down, gets the flag. Yeah, I think, I think they're just calling a hold there. Free hand on the back. But these refs are really, really calling it tight. Um, the check was pretty good. I didn't see a free hand on the back. 
We don't have the uh, benefit of instant replay. I would like to have seen that one again. They're going to end the pen. The quarter's going to end here. They're going to try to hold the ball. And five seconds to go. Ethan's going to try to steal the ball here and put the ball loose. So Dennis just passes it over Dennis. to Summers, and Summers will hold the ball until the end of the first quarter. So they'll maintain possession to start the second. There will not be a faceoff. All right, so St. Mary's Reichen will get possession here in the second quarter. Right now, PVI leading 3-1. So the home team taking it. Um, the home team right now beating St. Mary's Reichen. But, Cab, let's talk about your top 10. Obviously, you know, look at lacrosse in this area. Tell me your top 10 teams right now. Well, it's been a tough week to put together a top 10 with uh, St. Stephen's, Georgetown Prep, Gonzaga, and Landon. To me, all very even. And I'm going to give the nod this week to St. Stephen's. The reason I'm, I'm giving the nod to St. Stephen's at number one right now as we speak today is because they beat Boys Latin. First time they've ever beaten Boys Latin. They beat them in Baltimore. Boys Latin is a top 10 team in the country, and uh, they're 6-1. and one. Prep is also 6-1. and one. They're playing Gonzaga as we speak. They're the number two. Um, Gonzaga, number three, at 6-1 and one also. Has beaten Bullis. Has beaten St. Mary's at, from Annapolis. Uh, Landon. Or no, sorry, Calverton, the number four, who just beat Landon last week, is four and two. Number five, we have Landon, uh, who's three and two. With, with the loss to Calverton, uh, the next day they followed up with a win over Haverford, one of the top 20, 10 teams in the country out of Philly. This team we're watching here tonight, St. Mary's Riken, is four and oh, and they're number six in the area. They don't have a quality win, or I mean quality, a top 10 win yet in the, uh, on their schedule. Paul the six, I have right behind them at five and one, beat Episcopal. Uh, number eight, Bullis, six and two, with wins over Severn and Woodson. Number nine, St. Albans, six and two also, with a win over DeMatha. And rounding it out, Langley, uh, three and zero, oh, has yet to be tested and probably will not be tested until uh, April 21st when they play, play Georgetown Prep. Coming back to the booth, got us yeah. the second. So Langley there at number 10, you get a bit of the pro, uh, public school here in Virginia, but you can see why this game is so important because you, according to you, you have the number six and number seven team in the area playing each other. Riken undefeated right now. It's uh, the second quarter has just started here, 11.43 in the sec, uh, remaining in the second quarter. And St. Mary's Riken's man up. So Riken here, and there's a shot on goal and a goal for St. Mary's Riken. So getting a goal back here in the early going. Yeah, that's Nathan. Blondino on the rip. Uh, by number 14, Nathan Great finish. Matt, Matt Yates, is the other outstanding junior, uh, got the feed. They needed a man up goal. All right, so hopefully we're everything's clean. Everything's <laughs> both coaches probably talk to their players, say, "Hey guys, come on, let's get a clean game going. This man down, man up thing is not working for us." Three two now, and a quick. Uh, a quick face-off win for Riken. Riken shot. Shot goes wide. And it's going to be PVI ball, but Riken coming out quick out of the gates here in the second quarter. Let's go over. Great face-off by Preston. Sorry. No, 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 no problem. So let's go over the scoring so far. Five goals sco scored so far for St. Mary's Riken. Romar Dennis with a goal, and you just saw the goal by Nathan Blondino. Matt Yates with an assist for PVI. All three goals are for Connor Murphy. Chang with an assist, Lamb with, his, with an assist, and oh. Fullerton with assist, and a takeaway by Riken. A golden opportunity here, number 14, shoots and scores. Oh, oh actually, no score. Excuse me. So hit. Tool now with the ball, a nice opportunity missed by Riken. Hit the outside of the pipe. Was it? Nice individual effort by Nathan Blondino on the ride. You can see why he's going to Division One West Point, a top 20 program in the country. Yeah, Blondino there with a with a nice shot. It looked like it went in, but hit the side of the net. So PVI trying to grab some momentum back here. PVI in the white uniforms now going right to left. Up top is PVI looking for an attack. Looking for a, a shot, and we no shot yet for PVI. Nice work there, shot, nice save by Ignacic. That's his first save, according to my unofficial stats. So Lamb did a nice job trying to get an open shot, but Ignacic right there. Great now it's a scrum for the ball, and PVI now. Long stick passes it out. Jack McGuire with the clear. That was Jack McGuire on the ground ball there. 
these numbers are hard to see, Paul, at, at nighttime. There's gold numbers mm -hmm. on gold, the white jerseys. The light gold on the white jersey is tough to see up here. You probably have a, a better view watching from your computer screen or phone or tablet screen. So PVI now on the offensive possession, 948 remaining in the second quarter. Looks like um, looks like St. Mary's Wyken has a short step down in guarding the ball behind. And the Sixers. Had the ball, looking for a clear here for Riken. St. Mary's Riken put a short stick on and attacked them when I was trying to get out. And There's Dennis. Dennis with an opportunity, loses the loses the ball. 49 now for Riken with the ball. It's Mendenhall. Romar's got to protect the stick there. You're not going to hold it like a pizza in front of you running down the field like that and get away with it. Not against a great defense like PVI. Dennis now with the ball. He'll pass it over to 15, Wayson. Wayson goes over to Long. Over to Dennis. So they're just moving the ball around, looking for an opening. Dennis again. Settling in here, I think, finally. If we can stay away from penalties, we'll get a, we'll get a uh, cleaner match here. Dennis looking for an opportunity. Nothing doing there. So Ryden just looking for an opportunity. Back over to Romar. Swinging the ball to the left-hand side. Shot and wide left. Shot by uh, Wayson. We're going to have a flag, though. Two flags. This is being called very tight tonight. I thought that was clean. He took a shot. You got to expect to get hit. The guy just punched him right in the shoulders. So penalty on PVI. Another opportunity for Riken. Trying to tie this game back foul up. It was a great move. Down. I think the hit was by Ethan Fowler. Down here, one minute. It's a one minute penalty, so one uh, man up here for Riken, a golden opportunity. Riken seems to, to found themselves on offense a little bit, looking a lot better here in the second quarter. Swinging the ball around. Dennis now on the left. Good quick ball movement. Summers. Back over to Wayson. Wayson now looking for an opportunity. Wayson shoots. Nice save by Tool. I think that hit the pike. Either, a, either a hit, hit the pike or Tool had it with his stick. Still Ryken, uh, still Riken, excuse me. Still Riken ball on offense. Now behind the goal. Moving it around. There's Dennis over to Wayson. Back over to Dennis, trying to get his opportunity. They're not giving Dennis much of an opportunity anymore to shoot. And here it is, and just another bullet. Top shelf by Romar Dennis. When he gets his hands free, it, it works. It works. It's like a cat ever since that first shot. I've been waiting to see him shoot again. There's the opportunity, just very hard to defend against. If you give him any room and he has an opportunity to take a shot, you can see how much power he puts behind it. Yeah, I've, I've been... Uh forward to be coaching him for since his freshman year and he, he didn't used to be able to have any sort of accuracy and now he's extremely deadly another face face off win ball thrown away that you mentioned so you've known Romar Dennis for a while that physicality just just his the body size must help a lot in lacrosse well he's always been tall he's about six four six five but now he's starting to fill out and he's getting heavy and stronger and, and he's accurate with his shots. And if he gets it on cage, like I said, it's high 90s. It's hard to pick up. He blasted that from 16. High and hard, that was a great shot. Tie game. Only a junior. And it, again, it, it is a tie game here, 7-25. So very early on, Riken seemed like they couldn't get their offense going. They're having a problems with penalties. And now it seems in this second quarter, it's night and day from the first quarter. Yeah, Paul Six is having trouble clearing right there. A little, little lack of communication with the midfield. Um, they could, if they dropped the short stick over, they would have been a lot easier to clear. But. So now PVI taking their time, trying to cool down Riken. Probably going to see a longer possession uh, if the coaches get what they want for Paul the Six. We talked Not about long possessions shot. and discipline on offense. See how, how long that lasts right now. So a quick shot on goal there for PVI. They get the ball back. Still going in the attack. Looking for an opportunity. Nice job by the long stick by Riken, number 17. Gets the ball, clears it out, looking for a clear. 
Andrew Morgan, number 17, is an outstanding, big, strong lefty defender going to play Dickinson for uh, St. Mary's Reich, and he batted that pass down and started to clear. Nice job by number 49, Mendenhall, and calling a timeout, a great opportunity to call a timeout to retain possession there for St. Mary's Riken. So, I think, Tro I think Troy Mendenhall, number 49, was gonna be in a little bit of trouble there. It was a yep. smart timeout by Coach Southern to maintain possession. They've, got, they've taken control of this game now since the penalties have kind of subsided. Uh, they did get a couple man ups there, but still, I feel like they've regained control. Preston Dabbs, the faceoff guy, number 24 for St. Mary's Riken, is starting to win faceoffs. I've got him winning four out of seven so far. So, so Kevin, I'm going to put you in the coach's shoes here. So, obviously, what Coach Southern said after the first quarter, it's working. Now, on the other side, you go with PVI, you go to Coach Geller. What is Coach Geller saying right now to this team? Well, I think, you know, they were a little sloppy right there in their last possession. They haven't had offensive possession for a while. They've had three penalties. They got to not foul right now in the six on six defense. This is one of the First six on six settled offensive defensive sets we've had in the game. Let's see him guard. Let's let's see him guard without fouling uh, and see if they can stop Riken's balanced attack. And on, on offense for PVI, we've seen a couple possessions here in the second quarter, but I haven't seen any legitimate op scoring opportunities for PVI here in the second quarter. Yeah, it's about possessions. They haven't had the ball much. We'll see uh, what they can do. The, the matchup that's been intriguing so far is is uh, Pally for. For Paul the Six, number 22, the Duke commit, guarding the Loyola commit, number five, and he's staying on, and it's been uh, enjoyable to watch so far. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Metro Lax series presented by the Washington Post. We are live here at Paul the Six High School, watching St. Mary's Reich and NPVI battle a WCAC matchup. We are tied. 6.22 remaining in the first half. A great matchup so far. PVI came out quick, but Riken has come right back, and right now Riken has possession, looking to take their first lead of the game. Yeah, Connor Summers right here going, going to Randolph-Macon College. Uh, has a short stick and probably the best matchup on the field. He should he should look to dodge. Well, Leah Reich is down on the field, and she has a report. Leah, it's over to you. Penalty flags have been flying in the first quarter. Two technicals by PVI. Coach Fuller is just telling his guys they need to settle down, keep playing hard. On the other side, Coach Southern has been saying to keep their composure, have its players keep their composure, and they've been doing that as they've been dominating the second quarter. All right, back to you. Great report there by Leah. Shot and goal and score. You just mentioned Connor Summers. He gets his first goal of the game, and St. Mary's Riken with their first lead of the game. That was a Quick snap shot. It looked like he was actually just going to run the ball behind and just fired it. The goalie didn't even, I think the goalie was thinking he was just going to carry it behind as well. So right by the left leg of Tool, the goalie for PVI. And St. Mary's right can still getting that uh, momentum going. And let's see in the faceoff here if PVI can get this win. And an easy win for Riken on the faceoff. So Riken, they're just doing well on all facets of the game right now. They have a 4-3 lead, their first lead of the game. 5-22 remaining in the first half. Goal by Connor Summers, two goals by Romar Dennis. Yeah, they've, they've, built, they've got some confidence going right now. They built it in. There's Andrew, Mor Andrew Morgan, number 17. Nathan Blondino also with a goal for St. Mary's, and we're going to have a penalty. Well, they call him off sides at the uh, midfield here behind the play. It's an opportunity for PVI. Crossing midfield is number five for PVI. Carpenter. Carpenter passing. There's an opportunity for PVI. Shot and just left for PVI, but they still have possession. Murphy with a nice shot. Just missed. That would have been his fourth. <laughs> so Murphy here you got to figure that PVI is going to kind of lean on Murphy. Already has three goals in this game. All the goal scoring for PVI has been Murphy. Opportunity. And pick back up. Amber 18 for PVI. That's Scott Primo. So Primo. And now on the right side is PVI. And another loose ball scooped up by the long stick for uh, it's, uh, Mendenhall for Riken. 
Loose ball again right in the middle, right in front. A little kind of sloppy play here going on. Ball still down on the field. Scooped up by PVI. PVI has possession. That's Carpenter. Nick Carpenter with the ball. So right now it looks like PVI just want to slow things down. Things got a little wild there for, yeah. for a minute. Yeah, it was a great takeaway by Troy Mendenhall. Picked up his own ground ball after a takeaway and he just couldn't clear the ball. So Murphy now with the ball. He's got a short stick, so this is a dangerous situation for Riken. That's number 42, looks like, for Riken. Stellway, 43, excuse me. It looks like Riken is packed into a, uh, either a soft man or a set zone versus this, this dangerous situation. That's pretty smart. Looking for an opportunity and loses the ball. So great job on defense. We do have a uh, do have a hold. A great slide by Andrew Morgan to put that ball on the mat. So defense uh, in this game not getting any leeway here. No, that was a nice play. They called a loose ball push on on that. Carpenter with the shot wide left. Shot by Nick Carpenter. That was, Carp a, that was a good hard take by Nick Carpenter. Carpenter's been uh, right in the middle of the action here all all night for PVI, and he gets a shot on goal. <clears throat> now right behind the net, another opportunity, and goal! Goal for PVI, they tie it back up. Goal by number 24, Connor Murphy. And I should have known, number 24, Connor Murphy, nine, with his Lamb. fourth goal of the game. Ryan Lamb gets his second assist of the game, so a little back and forth here, the first goal for PVI in the second quarter. And again, Connor Murphy with that goal. Is he just in the right spots? He found a, a, a seam in the in the defense there. It looked like actually Reckon was playing a little zone. No one was picking up Murphy, and I was waiting for him to pick him up, and the guy was standing about five feet away, wouldn't guard him as if he was trying to cover a zone. So either maybe he, he was confused in the defense or, or it was zone, but Murphy is too crafty to leave inside. That's three goal, four goals and all four are from the crease. Carpenter scoops up the loose ball with the face off win. Tool now with the ball, working his way further away from the goal. Across midfield is PVI. They're gonna get the clear. Scotty Primo with the clear. So Primo now with the ball. Primo loses his footing. And it's gonna be a PVI ball here. So four for two, 23 remaining here in the first half. He's fortunate that was backed up. That wasn't necessary. He, he could have uh, maintained possession on the call there. Probably would have gotten a call if he kept it in the stick. An it's uh, uncharacteristic for the weather we've been having. An extremely cold night here at PVI High School. Another flag. Flag down on the play. PVI here with the ball. Looks like they're gonna get a uh, Hold on number 24, Preston Dabbs. Kamarka with the ball, he passes it out. Looks like shot saved by Ignacic. Looks like the shot was by uh, Carpenter. Great save. Good move by, by Carpenter and even better save. So Ignacic with the save, the sophomore goalie for St. Mary's Riken. 145 remaining here in the first Amber half. Man up for 30 seconds. But again, the penalties. It's a battle of who's got the best man up. They're gonna have to go deep in the playbook. You can't rely on the same play over and over. You gotta have three or four plays tonight. Nice long possession by P PVI here. Great opportunity to retake the lead here. Good pressure by 49, Troy Mendenhall. I like how he's playing tonight. Carper swings it over to the left and an opportunity shot in. Ball was not able to get out of, uh, of the stick, looked like. So now Riken here with possession, trying to get the clear. It's and the ball is thrown away, and it's going to be PVI ball. Talk about the weather. Just uh, as I said, I like him the way Troy playing. He threw a high pass there on the pressure. He probably should have tucked that and run. Everyone was All shut even. off. All even. He's a good enough athlete. I, I bet you he could run the ball out. So I talked about the chilly night we're having here in Fairfax, Virginia. How, do, how does that affect players on the field? Do they even notice the weather changes? Not tonight. It's not that cold. It's probably 50. Uh, that's perfect for lacrosse. Just because we're cold doesn't mean they are. They're, they're fine. It's, it's perfect. I, I played at Hobart, where if it got to 50, it was the warmest game Nick of the Carpenter year. With the shot. <laughs> so they can handle 50. Carpenter with a shot off the pipe, but still Panthers ball. 
for someone like me sitting up here in the press box, I'm freezing, but players, you know, they're actually doing something down on the field. They don't even notice it. Yeah, and, and usually the coaches don't also. They have adrenaline going. You know, not, not a factor. It's a perfect night for a good, good lacrosse game here. So again, a nice long offensive possession by PVI, but they really got to take advantage of the man up situation. All right, so it's 4-4 here, 29 seconds remaining, and a takeaway by Riken. 25 seconds remaining here in this first half. The score is 4-4. Riken maybe looking for an opportunity to get one more shot on goal to take the lead going into halftime. Of course, they got to get that clear. 13 seconds remaining here. Now 10 seconds remaining. Riken's got to have to hurry it up. And here's Dennis, the one the man they want to have. Just shot Four that. seconds remaining. Two seconds from a shot. And that will do it for the first the half. First half. In a game, a close game like we expected. 4-4 here, PVI and St. Mary's Riken as you go to halftime. So, uh, Cab, so far, a great game, what we expected. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, a, it's a sloppy game, and that's man up, man down. So, uh, it's a battle of, like I said, who's got the best man up? Who's got the, who, who's got the more creative plays, the better shooters? Both teams have good shooters. I think Riken's shooters are a little, uh, can shoot the ball a little bit harder, but all the six guys are, are craftier and shooting the ball better inside. Number 24, That's Connor Murphy, is one of the better crease finishers and crease players I've seen in a while. He's having an excellent night. He has all four goals. So let's let's uh, run through again. Let's let's talk about your top ahead, ten because we're seeing we're seeing top ten worthy play out here from some of these teams. Let's talk about your top ten in the areas. Well, uh, St. Stevens. I'm going to give the nod to St. Stevens, and some people may be uh, calling me. And saying, hey, you're crazy. Why isn't it prep? Why isn't it Gonzaga? Why isn't it Landon? Maybe you'd have it for well, St. Stevens is six and one. Everyone has a blemish on the record. I was just most impressed by their win over Boys Latin. That's a program changing win, an impressive win, and I'm gonna give them the nod, and that's as of today. Number two, prep, and if prep uh, beats Gonzaga tonight uh, strong and convincingly, they're playing right now. Uh, they may get the nod, but the, the, the exciting thing about this is that our number one and number two are playing next Tuesday, and we're going to be doing that live live stream yeah, game. So hopefully both both teams uh, uh, do win tonight, and uh, we have an opportunity to do one versus two. That's that said, Gonzaga, the, my number three team, uh, they I would not be surprised at all if they beat Georgetown Prep this evening. The game's at Prep. And hopefully I'll get a score for you before the end of the evening. You mentioned we're going to be doing that game next week. And this is the Metro Lax series. You're watching it live here on WashingtonPost.com. Metro Lax series. This is the second game this year in the Metro Lax series. We're going to do about 10 to 12 games broadcast live on WashingtonPost.com. You can watch it on your computer. You can watch it on your smartphone. You can watch it on your tablet. We give you all those options to watch your favorite high school across in this area. Let's jump right back into your top 10 real quick. Well, continuing, yeah, uh, we have uh, number four, Calverton, who had a the number biggest win in their program's the history by upsetting Landon oh, last week. I was at the game. Uh, they actually controlled the game for the most part. They were up 11 to six and held on to win 11 to 10. Landon right behind them, who lost to Calverton, but then yeah, the very I'm next going night going turned around and beat Haverford the preseason number one team in the country or number two team in the country, five to four over at Navy Marine Corps Stadium in, in Annapolis. Um, number six, I have undefeated St. Mary's Riken here, followed closely by Paul the Sixth. Uh, number eight, Bullis, six and two with wins over Severn and Woodson. Number nine, St. Albans, six and two with win over DeMatha. Um, and number 10 to round it out, uh, Langley, 3-0, who, who uh, has a big game on the calendar April 21st against Georgetown Prep. Also, we considered uh, Battlefield, who's off to 3-1, and one, who played Langley to a one-goal game. Episcopal High School, who's now 5-2 and two with their win tonight over Potomac School. Uh, and, and Woodson, I think, is uh, one of the top Nova teams as well. Some great starts to mention. Some great starts this season. The teams, uh, South County's 5-0. and uh, They're doing a great job with David Sims leading the way there for them. A uh, great sophomore there, and teammate here of Garrett Ignacic uh, in the goal. Centerville's 5-0 and uh, with Zach Sakura, their senior, their leader, going to Rutgers. They're off to a great 5-0 and start. Probably one of the better ones in program history. 
Churchill out of Potomac, Maryland is 4-0. Walter Johnson again is, is also 4-0. They, they play each other soon. Uh, and Briar Coach Woods, Loudoun 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 County, Loudoun with Coach Lipson's got him 5-0, and o, making some noise. We'll, we'll see how those great starts go as the season uh, continues. So you're talking about this whole area. You mentioned Briar Woods out in, in Brambleton in Loudoun County. You got Battlefield out, out in uh, Prince William, Haymarket area, South County out in Lorton, Centerville. All around uh, the area, you have great lacrosse. Obviously, we're here in Fairfax, Virginia. St. Mary's Riken over in Leonard Town. So this whole area, just real strong lacrosse this year. For sure, the DC area is one of the top three now in, in the country with uh, Baltimore, Long Island, mm -hmm. DC. Philly is in the mix there as well. Consistently, there's just so much talent now, so much depth. And we're sitting here watching a, a U9 or a U11 uh, youth game. And this, this is the reason the youth program in the area, the NVYLL, Northern Virginia, uh, the Montgomery County programs are outstanding, starting from age five now and with uh, little laxers and scoopers programs and going all the way up uh, through eighth grade, getting these kids ready for the big time in high school. As the SWA. <laughs> the Metro Lax series to receive a 15% discount. Visit madlax.com and as always, play with passion. Okay, so we, we mentioned the keys to the game here before this game started. What are the keys to the second half for both these teams? Uh, well, I, I, depending on how the game goes by the refs, if they're gonna call it tight, which they probably will continue to call it tight, uh, the defenses are gonna have to be a lot smarter. It, it seems like every single time they touch them on the shoulder, yeah even barely nick them. They're calling pushes, calling holds. They've called two free hand holds, which is a, kind of a, a, a tough call for varsity high school athletes. And uh, if it doesn't go to fouls, then then it's gonna be who's smarter. And right now, Riken's got momentum. I know that Paul the Six just, just uh, uh, evened it up at four, uh -huh. but I feel like Riken has won more face-offs, one more ground balls, is clearing a little better, a little easier, and we'll have more possessions if the game continues that way. Uh, that said, we know that Paul the Six has firepower. Missing Logan, uh, who was uh, bench, benched by coach's decision this evening, yeah. hurts a lot, that hurts a lot. He's an outstanding player, he had three goals, and about five minutes of play the other night against Episcopal when they beat Episcopal, which is a great program win. And uh, Logan's been battling back injuries, but it looks like looks like Murphy and Carpenter are doing a great job picking up the slack, and they're, they're going to be dangerous the second half. Let's talk more about Murphy here. Four goals in the game. All of the scoring for PVI has been from Connor Murphy. What is he doing so well? For, to me, it just looks like he's in the right spots. He knows where to be, and he's, he's finishing. He's headed to Rutgers University, and now I, now I see why. I've seen him play a lot over the years, but uh, he's really strong off ball. Uh, he's got excellent field sense and uh, shows well, and every single one of his shots has been from inside, which is hard to guard, very hard to guard. The other player um, with multiple goals so far after one half of play is Romar Dennis. You're really high on Dennis, so tell me what he's done so well in this first half. Well, he's, he's gotten, I believe, both of his goals on a man up. And if he has his hands free it's, it's, and he hits a cage, it's going to be a goal. He shoots a ball hard, very, very hard, high 90s. And he's about 6'5", and he has good reach, so he can really let it go. And it's hard for the, co the goalies to pick up because he brings it back and plays with a pretty high level of whip in his pocket, which means he can bring it way, way back and keep it, keep it out of the goalie's eyes and put it away before the goalie can usually even see it. Uh, he, he hasn't challenged Ethan Pally. I don't know if I would if I were him uh, because they have other better matchups on the field, but Ethan's doing a good job in six on six. We just haven't seen a lot of six on six. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen a lot of it. If we do, I think St. Mary's Reichen probably should keep going with Connor Summers and Garrett Wason uh, to dodge those short sticks. All right, we are 130 remaining here at halftime, but we have Leah Reich down on the field. Leah, what do you have for us? Hey guys, both.
both coaches are preaching the same thing to their team here at halftime. You need to really challenge one another, challenge each other. Both teams are playing very strong coming out. Coach Southern said to this Riken team, they really need to loosen up, work together, play harder. He said to them, who is going to make the least mistakes? We've seen so many penalties in this first half. The, it, the guys are they're emotional. This, uh, this Paul, uh, Paul the Six team has never beaten Riken. Emotions are high. So it's just going to be about who wants it the most here in the second half. Back to you. All right, thank you, Leah, with the inside scoop down on the field. Paul the Six is actually playing uh, with a special decal tonight. I was told by Coach Geller they're wearing number 10 decal in honor of Luke McGuire, the younger brother of number 27, Jack McGuire, the starter on defense. Uh, Luke had a brain tumor removed recently and is undergoing chemotherapy, and Luke himself wore number 10 for Vienna Youth. So that decal reminder hopefully will inspire them uh, as they put that on this, tonight to wear for the, for the game and I assume the rest of the season. Absolutely, okay, 20 seconds here remaining. So the, both coaches, one last huddle before the second half starts. And let's talk about how important this game is for both. It's early on, we know this, but how big would that be for PVI to pull out a win here? You mentioned a team that's, they, to, to a team they've never beaten before. How big is, would that win be? Well, Coach Geller actually spoke of that. We, I asked him what, what it's going to take for his team to get over teams like Georgetown Prep and Landon, who were on the schedule, and to beat St. Mary's Freshman right for the first time. And he said they got to believe. He said they got to believe they can do it. It's not good enough to, to lose by one. Um, we're playing tough and lose. And he, he said if, it, if we can change the, men, the mentality and the culture a little bit, maybe get over the hump tonight with a huge win for the first time over Riken, then they will believe and they can take the next step. And they, they will be firmly fixed as the number two uh, team behind Gonzaga, uh, who everyone has as the front runner if they win tonight. Either one of these teams, whoever wins tonight, uh, will be right behind Gonzaga and, and probably looking forward to the Gonzaga game themselves. All right, so a quick face-off win for St. Mary's Reich and starting the third quarter as they started the second quarter, but a nice save there by Tool. Scrum in the middle of, uh, in, in the right in front of the goal. Nice save by Zach Tool, the goalie. Omar there's, Dennis. E there's Ethan beating on uh, Romar, and Omar doing a nice job protecting it. You mentioned that before was he was having some problems protecting it there in the second nice, quarter. Nice Great job, job by Dennis. Great job there protecting it because Ethan's got, he's got some excellent takeaway checks and has nice, look like a nice uh, over the head and wrap there. Nice defense by PVI. So Riken still with possession here in the opening minutes of the second half. Nice move and a shot just high. That was a sweet move there by Connor Summers. He swam, it's called a swim move when you put your hand uh, with, your, with the stick, with the ball in the stick, and you swim your arm over the defenseman. So he Summers did. with a, a nice move and just high, already has a goal, and there's Dennis ju just unloading. That looked, like, that looked like freshman year. That's yeah. what he used to do freshman year. <laughs> You're not getting that ball back. That's out there on, uh, on the street. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a good move for him. Uh, he pumped the fake pass to the top center and then just let it go low to high, but too much whip on that one, sent that one about 15 feet over. So I mentioned what a win would, would mean for PVI. For St. Mary's Riken, if they get a win, is it almost, you know, is it almost a trap game for them here? If they get a win, people will say, yeah, you always beat PVI. And if they lose, then they're going to say, well, you know, what's wrong with your team? So do they have any, any you know, just for, for public perception, it, it's tough. It's a, a tough game for Riken. Yeah, it is. But they do expect to win. Uh, they're not an overconfident bunch. They're, they, they're very humble as led by uh, Coach Southern, but they, but they do expect to win this game. That was previously there. That was a great takeaway by, I think it was number five, Nick Carpenter on defense with the short stick, and he cleared the ball all the way down the field. And it might be him who's down. So we have an injured Panther down on the field. Could be Carpenter. Actually, I, I might. I think I see Carpenter. Yeah, I think uh, it is kneeling Nick. right before, right next to the yeah, injured it is, player. Yeah, it's Nick Carpenter. It's Nick Carpenter. I think he's okay. I think he got smacked after he uh, moved the ball, but he should be okay. It was a great play by him to clear the ball. Outstanding play. Um, story about Nick Carpenter, what coach told me, he's a uh, junior having a great year. He's a 4.0 student, an excellent student, smart. He has Ivy League aspirations, um, and it, it looks to me like he definitely could be a, uh, a Division One player, and whether he goes Ivy League, which 
which would be uh, impressive well, academically is to be seen. The Ivy Leagues take longer recruiting uh, and don't get as many early verbal commitments like some of the uh, the non non scholarship schools. But uh, hopefully he's okay. He's limping going off. So he is is coming off though. He may, might not. It looks like he's coming off under his own power there, but he is limping. And if you lose Carpenter, I mentioned uh, throughout the first half, is he's always in the middle of it. So if you lose Carpenter and you're always already missing one of your best players, that's a tough thing to come back from. That, that'd be very, that'd be a very tough loss. We'll watch what happens with him. Maybe our, our uh, we can get a report from the sideline on him. But uh, he, uh, he's walking very slowly. He actually has. Um, I, this, it looks like what it is. He's playing with a pulled groin. Coach told me. I just remembered that. Mm -hmm. So it's so pulled that it's black and blue down uh, in the inside of his leg, and he's been playing with it all season, which is a, a tribute to how tough the kid is. The coach will speak about how tough he is. He plays through pain. He plays through uh, injury. It looks like he might have just tweaked it. I hope he didn't re -tear, re tear his. Groin. Obviously, yeah, we, we hope that, that nothing too serious, but he was walking very gingerly back to the sideline. A bad tear is, uh, that's like two or three weeks, so I hope he's okay. So PVI with possession, looking for an opening. Hey, no scoring here in the second half. 4-4, 9.05 remaining in the third quarter. Big WCAC matchup, and you're watching it live. Wide left. Shot, shot on goal, 12, number 12 for PVI with the shot. Ryan O'Connor, the freshman midi. Ryan O'Connor's had a, had an impressive uh, uh, freshman start this season. He had a couple of points against Georgetown Prep. Uh, he's been, got about seven or eight points on the season. He's a huge kid for a freshman. He needs to step up now if Nick's not playing. For teams like PVI and Riken in the WCAC, how good in season do you have to be to start as a freshman? He, he, he and another freshman uh, are outstanding. The other, the other freshman uh, is number number nine, Ryan Lamb, who I believe already has a couple of. Oh yeah, Lamb with two assists. Yeah, he's a freshman too. And those two kids played youth ball together for Braddock Road, and Braddock Road won the uh, U15 championship last year with them. And they both came to school here, and they're both starting as freshmen. So we're, Impressive. we're talking about how good this team is this year for PVA. Future definitely bright with freshmen contributing already on this team. But here's Romar Dennis looking for an opportunity to shoot. He has two goals in the game. He's going to pass it over to number 14 for St. Mary's Reich. And that's Blondino. Blondino has a goal as well. So Blondino over to Dennis. Dennis over to Blondino. Now back over to Summers. Hey, Summers has a goal as well, so all three of these. This is the matchup they need, they need to attack right here. Connor needs to dodge the short stick. So nothing doing there for Summers. Back behind the goal. That's Long. Long loses it. Is that Ethan? Who is that defender? I can't see the numbers. I'm sorry. I think that's 22. Hillenbrand with, oh, no, Hillen with oh. a great work there. But they're not able to clear. Turnover here, Riken with an opportunity, number 18. Good save. Nice save there Shot by Tool. Golden Game opportunity, uh, PVI Tool. being kind of loose with the ball. And now PVI cross midfield, loose pass. PVI with the ball. And we're gonna have, we have a whistle, play is dead. And Riken is going to take possession. Previously, Steven Hillenbrand with that takeaway check and D twig the kid. Offside that was an impressive uh, an aggressive play. The wind is picking up here a little bit. 707 remaining in the third quarter. Close game, 4-4. Four, four. Going to an invert. Oh, look at Connor's got a step on this guy. An opportunity, a shot. Good move by Connor. So kind of trying to, the senior midi trying to get more involved here, already has one goal in the game. Tools getting getting a bit of work out here in the third quarter. Yeah, Reckon's putting good pressure on with their single, in, it looked like they got an invert. Invert is when you put your midfielders behind the goal and your attackmen above the goal. And Reckon's been doing a little bit of that, actually doing it right now too. Let's see if they can get the ball over here to Connor. Last time Dan had the ball taken away here. He's got to move it to the short stick. Great job on defense there. And Connor did does have it over to Dennis. Back to 
Connor Summers. Summers back uh, passes it back down. This kid, uh, Steven Hillenbrand's got a very active stick defensively. Look at this. He's taking the ball away again. Nice opportunity. The defender doesn't know the ball is loose. Let's go to Leah. Hey guys, we have Leah Reich down on the field with an injury update. Nick Carpenter. His team doctor wouldn't tell me exactly what was wrong, but it did look like it was a rolled ankle possibly. He's sitting on an ice chest, icing it right now. Looks like he's going to be fine. He seems pretty optimistic. Uh, not sure if he's going to be able to be back in for the rest of the game. Shot on goal and score. Thank you, Leah. And a goal. Number 18. Number 18 for Primo for PVI. PVI retakes the lead here. So great news from Leah with just a rolled ankle. And now, and more great news for PVI, they take a 5-4 lead. That was a nice transition play by Scott Primo. He ran the ball down and took a nice shot right off the hip on Garrett Ignacic, the goalie, and just stuck it near pipe. One, one thing for PVI here, really want to start winning some of these face-offs to keep that momentum going. Preston no. Dabbs has won the majority of the face-offs tonight. That's his sixth win and only three losses. So really dominating the faceoffs are Riken, and that means PVI having a hard time. They can't build on this momentum if they if, if Riken gets the ball back and goes on a long offensive series. Yeah, the two most important positions on the field are the faceoff specialist and the goalie. So nine goals so far scored in this game, and, and Kev, I was mentioning uh, how good the goalkeepers are this uh, in, in this game, and then just as I say that. Reichen gets on, gets another goal. Blondino gets his second goal. I feel like I may have uh, jinxed PVI there talking about the, the great goaltending work there, but 5-5. But it still remains the two quality goalkeepers on both sides. Yeah, they have been have, having great seasons. Uh, the, uh, Paul the sixth goalie, Zach Tool, was uh, honorable mention WCAC last year. That goal right there was Nathan Blondino from Matty Yates the connection again for second tonight. So Yates with two assists, Blondina with two goals. Those two juniors are outstanding attacking for Riken. They light up the scoreboard. Uh, and it, that ball movement before that goal was impressive. For those watching at home, if you have friends that enjoy quality lacrosse, shoot them an email because we have a great one here in Fairfax, Virginia. 5-5 five, five right now, 4.50 remaining in the third quarter. A great WCAC matchup as Agnostic, Agnostic has the ball, passes it out. So 5-5, five, five. looking for the clear is St. Mary's Riken near midfield. Can't get past midfield, great defense by PVI, and now they have the ball at midfield Justin and looking for a clear. Chang with the clear, PVI offensive possession. They have, it's a 5-5. Five, five. They mo more recently had a 5-4 lead, but Riken came back. 5-5 five, five tie right now. I think that's number six, the freshman. I uh, know, oh that's Chris Carmarca, the, the junior attacking the ball. So Carmarca with the ball. Still no Nick Carpenter in this game. If he rolled his ankle, I can see him on the sidelines. It doesn't look like he's moving. His helmet's off. So a big loss for PVI. 346 remaining here in the third quarter. 5-5 game. PVI with the offensive possession, looking for a shot. Shot and save. save. Nice save there by Gnostic. Great save by Garrett for, for St. Mary's Reichen. Oh my gosh. For Garrett. Ball is loose, and they're going to have a loose ball loose foul ball there. Push. Loose ball push. And hey, we have ha actually haven't had uh -oh. very many penalties, and now we have some talking after the fact. I don't know what number it is. It's like a technical foul against St. Mary Wright. I'm not sure what that call was. I thought it was going to be conduct, but it looks like a technical uh, hold. Let's talk about the intensity, 5-5 yeah. game. Yeah, they're, call they're calling a technical hold on that late flag. I didn't see it. Looks like they're calling Troy Mendenhall, number 49. Another opportunity here for Paul the Sixth. So it looks like they're picking up the intensity here. Real close game, real important game for both teams. And that's, that, that could be a reason for all the penalties. It would be great to see as this game gets more intense and as we get down, you know, with three minutes ago, a tie game here. I'd love to see the refs let them battle a little bit, let them bang. 
because this is going to be an outstanding finish if they let it do that. The turnover here and the crowd's going wild here for Riken with an opportunity to take the lead. Still, still has an opportunity that's number 18 over to number 14 for Riken. Matty Yates high stepping it on the carry. So Blondino looking for a hat trick. Blondino's double team. He's just got to sprint to get away from this and kill time. Nice, nice move. They got to move it. So right, the they're all leaving. They're all leaving. They got an empty net opportunity here. There's Dennis with a nice flick. Shoots it underhand. He didn't need to do that. I think he was just trying to get uh, get tricky there. Well, technically, you're, you just you just want to catch that ball, shoot the ball overhand. But he had the ball uh, caught down by his waist, and he just shot it from his waist. Summer picks up the loose ball, gives it over to Wayson. Wayson takes a shot. He's wide. I like the way Garrett's been getting hard to the rack, beating his short stick, and he's, he's getting shots off before the slide even gets there. He, he, might, he might be a factor here. Wayson, the junior midfielder, oh. a high pass. Throw away. It's going to be scooped up, actually. We're going to have a, offside an offsides blue. on, on Riken. And now we have another flag. I'm interested in what that flag was. If it's all sides of blue, it should have been a play on. So. Yeah, that makes sense. It should have been a play on. I'm not sure what the call was there. If blue stepped over and white picked up the ball, it's a play on situation. They killed it, and Paul the Six had a fast break there. I'm sure the PBI coach is a little. Uh, and then you, you hear, little, you're a little excited about. We're hearing the fans out and out, out saying the same exact thing. I think the other ref is telling the other, the one ref he I shouldn't have thrown the flag. All right, so you're watching game number two of the Metro Lax series presented by the Washington Post. Series of uh, 10 to 12 live streams broadcast and streamed live on WashingtonPost.com. You can watch these on your computer, your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet. You can watch it any way you want here on WashingtonPost.com, AllMetSports.com. You're watching live PVI versus St. Mary's Reichen, 5-5, 209 remaining here in the third quarter. A great game, big WCAC matchup. Another man up opportunity. I still didn't get a, maybe the the um, play, by, play by play on the field down there will give us the call, but uh, man up opportunity for pole to six. A lot of launching on the field during this game. We had a bit of a reprieve in the second quarter, but the flags are back. So PVI now right here, right here at the top. All right, so Riken changed there. And a shot wide that's, left. That's, 20, that's 24 shot. Connor Murphy on the inside. That 141 man up offense, he is deadly. They might consider just shutting him off right now. But with though short stick. That reaction is another down. one. And he, he finds it this time. His by number 24, fourth. Connor Murphy. Connor Murphy his fifth goal. Justin Chang. Justin Chang gets his second assist. Just gonna mention that, that Murphy just continued to, to take his shot. Why not with five goals in this game? That was the exact same shot. He's got five goals, literally every single goal has been has been uh, in, in the crease inside. Now he, it seems like he, he's, he's shooting against Agnostic in the same spot. Is that just watching film trying to find any weak spot for the goalie? No, that was a good hard bouncer. That was a great bounce shot and uh, uh, it just bounced over Garrett's shoulder. Garrett could have stood bigger, uh, a little, little bit bigger there, but it was, um, it was a hard high bouncer. The other ones were low into the corner. And that one was just a high bounce in the same spot, though. It's the, the curious thing is the location. He's got all five from, I think, within a five-foot uh -huh. circle on the same, the same place on the field. So you got to imagine uh, Coach Southern is going to say, do not let that kid in that spot again. I, I, I would go to uh, – I would, I would shut, shut the kid off. I would try to use a short stick possibly to, uh, to shut him off. So PVI with possession, they now have a five, a six-five lead, a back and forth game. Although PVI has been leading for most of this game, one minute remaining here in the third quarter, about to get to crunch time here. An opportunity shot in that's wide Scott, right. Scott Primo, I believe, at number 18. Yeah, that's a good take. He's got some confidence now after that last goal so he scored. Primo with the shot, but the reaction time I'm seeing from the young goalie for Riken. And we have a, an injury here. 
Looks like he's got a cramp. He just took himself down. The uh, the goalie Garrick did get a piece of that last shot, but um, he he's got. I think he's only got about four or five saves. He probably wants probably wants more. And look at that. We have Leo Reich, our uh, sideline reporter, throwing out shirts to fans. The nice, healthy crowd here at PVI High School. Everybody's getting a shirt. Yeah, it's a big, uh, it's a big crowd here. Friday night lacks lights, so to speak, for uh, for this game. It's a great game so far. Six six with 50 seconds to go. Sh should be exciting. So Leah Reich, she's she's given us the great insight, the great injury report. She's also given the crowd T-shirts. Yeah, free T-shirts. Free T-shirts. You get. All season, I think uh, we're, we're giving those away. One thing I wanted to mention on, on behalf of Paul the Six is they uh, they have been sending the cross care packages as part of Operation Warrior Outreach (OWO) to alumni from Paul the Six serving overseas. Uh, Reebok has been involved and in sponsored and in giving the sticks away, and uh, it's actually been getting some some great coverage and it's a great move and uh, action. But for, for the Paul the Six alums and for the, all the players here in the community, giving Still, back to the uh, service members. A great job there by PVI, nice, a nice opportunity for them. Uh, Interplayer back up. Yeah, he's and, okay, he cramped up. Yeah, just walk, he's walking off under his own power. So 6-5 PVI here, 5.30, uh, sorry, 53 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Big important WCAC matchup. Going into crunch time, Cab, what are you telling your team? Well, we have one quarter to go. I, mean, I think right now maybe they're just going to focus on getting a uh, last possession, hold for 50 seconds. I would not use a timeout. You want to save those in a close game for the last few minutes of the fourth quarter. So if Paul Six is disciplined enough to hold the ball here for 50 seconds, maybe 40, uh, and then go to the goal, run a play, or attack a short stick, that would be very smart. It would, take, it would control momentum going into the fourth quarter. They do have a short stick matchup here, so we'll see if they attack or hold a little bit longer before they before they go to the cage. So PVI with possession on offense here. Ball over to uh, Ryan Lamb. Lamb with two assists so far in the game. Should be noted that PVI missing two of its best players. Carpenter out here rolled his ankle early on. Good slide there by Andrew Morgan. Number 12 for PVI now with the ball. That's O'Connor. O'Connor flips it over to Connor Murphy. The goal scoring machine for PVI. And it's nine seconds remaining. Shot on goal, hits the side of the net. Five seconds remaining here in this game. I mean, sorry, in this third quarter, excuse me. And that's how the third quarter will end. PVI up top, on top, six to five. Very smart play there by Paul the Six to hold for the last shot. That now they've got momentum and the lead going into the fourth quarter. This is gonna be great. So scoring ha has been at a premium uh, during this game, just 11, 11 goals so far in this game. Fourth quarter though, so putting you in, in the shoes again of the coach. What are you telling right now PVIs? What are you telling your PVI squad if you were the coach? Well, I think now, even more so than before the game, you really have to uh, hold the ball in offense and be patient. You have your Logan not playing, and you have uh, one of your top players, and Nick Carpenter not playing now on injury. So they have to win, they have to uh, maintain the lead. If they fall behind, they're going to be in trouble because then they're going to have to push, push, push. That being said, Scott Primo has stepped up. Chang, uh, Justin Chang, number 25, has stepped up. Those kids are playing better. Uh, to fill in and get more, as they get more playing time. Um, but as I said, for the keys to the game, the impact players uh, that have done so well right now, let's, let's just go back and look at that. Nathan Blondino's having a great game. Matt Yates is playing well uh, for St. Mary's Riken. Preston Dabbs is actually winning the face-off battle. I have him winning six out of nine so far for, uh, for Riken. On the other hand, you have Paul of Six. Ethan Pally's playing great. He's done a nice job at the midfield. Uh, they're not attacking him, so, uh, but he's doing a nice job. Murphy's been the story. Five, five goals on six shots. He's been dominant, and if they don't stop him, uh, St. Mary's Reichen's in, in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a good one here at uh, Paul the Sixth High School. 
the Panthers lead 6-5. to five. Hey, why not purchase a copy of this broadcast from Synthesis Media Productions? Go to www.synthesismp.com. So St. Mary's Riken now with possession across midfield. They want another faceoff. And that's one thing Riken has done with great efficiency in this game is win faceoffs. Got a whistle offsides here, offsides. Blue. Offsides, that's frustrating for St. Mary's Reich. And offsides, it did not need to be. You start the fourth quarter down by one. You win the faceoff thinking about going on, on offense. And you, and you get the penalty and a great opportunity there by PVI. Great pass, but just knocked off the stick. Ooh, nice takeaway there by Andrew Morgan. Backside wrap check right there. Detwigged, knocked the stick out of his hand. So now Reich in here with possession. Give the ball to Ignacic for this last quarter. Riken is going left to right. Again, Riken in the navy blue uniforms. Number 17 here for St. Mary's Riken Morgan. Andrew Morgan's going to be a nice player at Dickinson College, a top five Division three program. Beautiful interception there by 22. Ethan Polly with the clear. Ethan he has an opportunity. The long stick's going to shoot it. He is going to shoot. Nice save by Agnostic. The long stick shot with the shot. Ethan Good save by Garrett. I knew, I could tell that Ethan was going to shoot that ball as soon as he picked it off. <laughs> he was looking straight at the goal the whole time. Nice pick off on, off, uh, on the ride by him. It's not often a long stick gets that scoring opportunity. you got to take advantage. Yeah, he's got a couple goals in the year uh, so far, and he probably will score five to ten goals this season. He's outstanding stick skills, and that's why he's going to Duke. All right, 10-49 here remaining in the game. Fourth quarter action here at Paul VI High School. PBI leading 6-5 to five and with possession. Looking for an opportunity, looking for an attack. Great defense by Riken, the turnover from PBI across midfield. Preston Dabbs, tough, tough defense. Here That's come, great defense. Dabbs still with the ball. Here comes Riken and Romar Dennis with the ball, passes it over to number 18. Romar's got a short stick right now, and he's got to get to the goal before they get Ethan on him. They gotta get him the ball. Get out of his way and get it. There's get to Romar. The goal. Two goals in this game, but hasn't taken very many shots. I think Romar will take this defenseman as well. And here's Romar looking for an opportunity. Nice move by Dennis. He's gonna take the shot just wide left, but a great move. Yeah, I, I think Romar's a smarter player than um, he was a few years ago. He recognized a, a good matchup there uh, on number 30, 33, Connor Jehelka, who hadn't guarded him all game. Uh, and here it is again. Let's see if he takes him again. Junior midfielder with two goals in this game. Has a great shot. Nice defense there. Romer has an opportunity. Loses the ball. Turnover. Takeaway check by Connor Johalka. So PBI here with possession. Ball loose though. Scoop still loose. Looking for that ground ball. Picked up by Riken. Ball over to Summers. Summers with an opportunity. Working his way towards that, Summers finds his way, score! Connor Summers, his second goal of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tied up again on a beautiful goal by Connor Summers. Great play by actually Daniel Long at the, at, on the ride. He picked up the ground ball, moved it down to Connor, who blew by his guy, tucked it, put it away lefty. Nice lefty, he's a right-hand player. That's a great play, by, great finish by Connor Summers on the bounce shot off on the pipe. Hey, since 1997, Mad Lax is, is the cross for D.C., Maryland, and Virginia families. Check out madlax.com to learn about tryouts for the D.C. area's most competitive summer all-stars program and summer camps for boys and girls ages 7 to 18. Visit one of the three area uh, retail stores and mention Metro Lax Series to receive a 15% discount. Visit madlax.com and as always, play with passion. Great ride there by St. Mary's Riken to force another turnover. That's two in a row. Paul VI hasn't been able to clear. That's going to that's gonna give Riken their first midfield back out. Preston Dabbs won the faceoff again. I have him winning now eight. A lot of scoring here by a, a few players on both of these teams. Summers with two goals, Dennis with two goals, and Blondina with two goals for St. Mary's Riken. They got another goal here for St. Mary's Riken. Another goal for Blondino. Blondino now with three goals. And St. Mary's Riken, just like that, has a 7 6 lead. Blondino gets a hat trick, the junior attack. He's playing with confidence. He did a uh, old school face dodge, Went, pulled it back to his uh, right, 
and stuck it low. Nice move by Nathan Blondino for the hat trick. You mentioned scoring was at a premium there in the That's third quarter. And just it. like that, St. Mary's Riken. They've been scoring in chunks. Remember how they came out in that second quarter and scored too quickly. There's a face-off win for PVI. They really needed that. That's a first one since I think the first quarter, maybe Will early Biagi second. They really needed win. that one. That's Will Biagi with the face-off win, the junior, uh, junior midfielder. He's committed to Michigan, second team WCAC. And now, they, now they're down by goal. They don't have to press, but there is eight minutes to go in 15 seconds. So they're gonna have to be smart and then get to the goal. A lot of the times here early on, that ball was run through Carpenter. Carpenter not involved in, in right now. Ryan Lamb taking over. Ryan Lamb loses the, loses the ball, picked up by Riken. So an opportunity missed there by PBI. Still plenty of time, 7.50 remaining here in the game. But Riken looking to extend their lead. They have, only, they have not had a two goal lead in this game. That all started with Preston Dabbs playing excellent defense, putting the ball on the mat, and they picked it up. Number number 30, Jack Bradenberg, great ground ball in traffic to get the clear, and the quick clear, and the smart clear. The last time there was a two-goal lead in this game, it was PVI leading 3-1. to one. Since then, it's been real close, and most of the time, PVI has had the lead, but right now, Riken has the lead when it counts, 7-15. Remaining in the game, Riken leading seven to six, and they have possession. Opportunity here for Riken, looking, looking to uh, find an opening. Loses the ball, scoop back up. Riken still with possession. Ball goes over to Romar Dennis. Now it flips it's over to Connor up. Summers. Summers with an opportunity. He has two goals already in this game. Summers finds his way past, right over. No shot there, number 18, uh, that was Yates. Yates uh, wisely didn't take that shot. Talk about situations. So now looking, uh, looking at a opportunity here for St. Mary's Riken. Yeah, with the, one goal, with the one goal lead, you want to be smart. The situation is you have a one goal lead with, with six minutes to go in the game. There's no need to rush. You can see they're getting into a nice uh, Formation here with packing the crease. They got to play. They're going to go to a. I thought they're going to take it to an invert there with Garrett, but um, a pass beautiful pass. Nice job by Tool though. That was a set play off of that triple crease, and it worked perfectly. But Tool was right there. Excellent play. Nice play all the way around. A, a beautifully drawn up and executed by Riken, but Tool right there, Johnny on the spot, making the save. This just in, we got Gonzaga four, Georgetown Prep two. That's a huge win for Gonzaga. Because PVI, they are down 7-6 here. They have possession. Great WCAC matchup. You're watching it live. Our Metro Lex series on WashingtonPost.com. An opportunity for PVI, trying to come through, look for an opportunity, shoot, and off the pipe. Great save, that was actually a save by Garrett. Garrett got a stick on that. So Garrett gets the stick on it. And Murphy was looking for an, yet another goal. Great opportunity, but you know, you need to go against a, a tough goalie like Garrett. Yeah, that was not in his favorite spot, but he still had a nice quality move and hard, hard shot. Garrett made a great save. Five minutes to go up a goal here is a situation. I think Riken's very... Uh, I noticed some limping here on Blondino. Number 14, Blondino's limping, huh? Are they going to go to a circle offense, which is the best offense for really possession? Is, it, is this the time when you start trying to kill the clock? 4.45 remaining up by one. Is that, is it, there's still too much time? A little, little too early, yeah. If you do that, then you're going to get nervous and you're going to not throw the ball with confidence and do things like that. And here's a turnover. And we got a flag as well. That's a bad little sequence of events there for, for PVI with possession. Across midfield, number 12 with the ball for PVI. That's Ryan O'Connor. Here's an opportunity for PVI. Shot and save by Ignacic. Now we're going to find out this flag. That was a we have another good, flag good, down here. Good move by uh, Primo. I believe that was Scotty Primo who took that shot off hip, and it was just a good save by Garrett Ignacic. So 4.17 remaining here, 7-2-6, Riken with the lead. I think this is going to be a huge opportunity for PVI. I think we got a couple of men up, a couple of flags against Riken. 
it's either going to be uh, one man up for a long time or two, two man up, a chance to tie. So right now, St. Mary's Riken, they're 4-0. And the sprinklers are turned on here at PVI. Looks like, looks like the, uh, the timers for the, for the sprinklers popped on and they got them off good. But I, look, actually, you know what? It was a dead ball foul on, on uh, Paul the Six. So that means that uh, they're going to be playing five on five lacrosse. And uh, because it was a dead ball foul, they award the ball to Riken. Even though there's a foul on both teams, it's going to be five on five. And looks like they're going to have Ethan on the ball here. This is the matchup we want to see, see if he can take the ball away. He's very good at taking the ball away. Romar, conversely, is fast and has good stick protection. And they're in a total shutoff. If you look, if we could show the whole, the whole field, everyone is completely shut off for for uh, Reich and they have no outlets. Romar's just gonna have to run here and this is gonna be athlete on athlete. Big boy on big boy. Let's see what we got here. Let's set it up here. St. Mary's Reichen, four, uh, they, they have a 4-0 record. PVI 5-1, Reichen leading 7-6 here in this WCAC matchup. And Dennis gets past him and shot and score. Just pure athleticism from Romar Dennis. A beautiful goal at a beautiful time. But what happened there is Ethan went for the takeaway, went over the head and uh, missed. And then Romar had excellent poise, very, very good poise to finish there. Couple of fakes, went low, went low, went low, went high, they went low and finished it over the top. Six foot six, it's nice to finish over the top. Another dead ball foul against Paul the Sixth. After the goal, looks like they were, they were unsportsmanlike conduct yelling at the ref after the goal, saying that they thought Romar was in the crease. He was, from my angle, was not in the crease. Right now they have not marked the goal though. Still 7-6, no goal has been marked on the scoreboard. Did they, they award that goal? It I, Brett, is it a goal or not? It is a goal. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't think there was any question on that. I saw the, the referee's arms went up and scored. It was just that uh, Paul the Sixth the, score, uh, the scorekeeper in the press box did not see that and uh, did not put the goal on the on the scoreboard. But now, okay, you got a two goal lead. Yeah, Four oh six remaining. Now it's but still five on five lacrosse. It looks like maybe maybe six on five. But smart timeout by Coach Southern for Riken. So right now, I think it's Riken's timeout. That might be a, a, a smart timeout by Paul the Six to to get your defense in order for the situations here. You're going to have to go out and double team now. You're down, down two with four minutes to go. You have to start on, uh, taking risks right around the three minute mark. You don't have to do anything crazy right now. Um, being, But uh, I would say by the three minute mark, you're gonna have to go out and your goalie might have to leave the crease. You might look for that. You might look for double teams. Uh, but I don't think Riken's gonna go to the goal here. Looking for them to kill the full minute passing the ball around. You mentioned the potency of Riken's offense. Just a few moments ago, they're down by one. You blink, yeah. and they're up by two. Yeah, that just shows how good they are. Yeah, they're balanced. Connor Summers made a great goal there. Nathan Blondino both made individual efforts on assisted goals. Um, so three players scoring the goals, scoring the eight goals for Riken. You got Romar Dennis, we mentioned, has a hat trick. Nathan Blondino, he has himself a hat trick. Connor Summers with two goals. And Matt Yates has two assists as well. So you got those, those four players playing very well for Riken here. Yeah. And they're probably going to put all those kids on the field right now. Let's see what the situation is here. I think it's five on four. It is. It's five on four. Four minutes and six seconds to go. Riken's up by two. Okay. They're going to... Probably want to hold the ball the whole time here and see if Paul the Six comes out and guards them. You don't try to go for the three goal lead? No, yeah, absolutely not. I mean, you, you, just, there you go. They should just pass it back and forth right there. They should pass it back and forth for at least a minute. I don't know when the penalty releases. I'm not quite sure when that is. I think it might have been a full minute, but the foul before that was, uh, uh, I believe, a 30. So yeah, you don't want to take any stupid shots here. You just want to hold the ball, move it around, pass it around. They shouldn't even put a guy in the crease. They should just bang it around. If Paul the Six is not going to come out and go for it, 
why go to the goal? I mean, there's, there might be three minutes left by the time all these penalties end. All right, now the refs have told him to keep it in, and that's not going to change anything on man up because all that means is you have to keep it in the box, mm -hmm. uh, and they're well inside the red lines there. Now it's a six on five. Both penalties uh, released, so it's a regular man up. And still, same situation. I yeah. wouldn't even go to the goal. So if you're PVI, do you, do you, do you go and attack? Now you got to go. It's three minutes ago right now. And all now you're all, all even. We're all even? We're all even now. There you go. Got to get after it now. You got to get out and get after it. Just under three minutes here remaining here in this game. A great one here at PVI. St. Mary's Riken leading Paul the sixth, eight to six, 245 now remaining in this game. Riken with possession, just killing time. Exactly what they want to do. Romar Dennis with his third goal, the last goal scored by St. Mary's Riken. Nathan Blondino can run all day. Um, even though 15 doesn't have a guy on him, he should not go to the goal there. There's should, no need to go to the goal. You He's got a short it? stick on him. He should stick behind the goal. Garrett should stick behind the goal. Garrett wastes him and just hang out. He could run all day back there. Both and Nick, should. Nick Carpenter, the junior. Goalie's out. They're sending double teams. Still really an opportunity. shouldn't shoot. You really shouldn't shoot that. Here's an opportunity for PVI. There's Romar Dennis right there for, and the ball is loose. Good action on the sideline there. Good hit by Connor to make up for his shot. And it's gonna be Riken ball. You really only shoot up, up, up two or more goals if it's an empty netter, no chance of ever missing type of shot. Otherwise, you just wanna keep possession of the ball and run out the clock. Two minutes and four seconds to go. They're gonna have that opportunity right now. Crowd's really getting into it here. Big, huge game here in the early going in the WCAC. Romar Dennis with have, the ball. Ethan Pally was on the ball and they switched. They shouldn't have switched. But Dennis oh. throws it away. And it's gonna be- Chance for Riken here. It's gonna, it's gonna be PVI ball there, down by two. 152, I mean 152 remaining. The Panthers need to play smart here. What's going on now in the Panthers' mind as they get possession? I meant Chance for Paul the six here, and they got lucky. That was a poor clear that just bounced in their uh, stick. Now we're timeout, gonna, we're gonna timeout. Call it timeout. Yeah. They need a quick goal here. You wanna play. They've. They've got a, they've got some finishers, so they're gonna run a play probably for Murphy, maybe coming off some picks or something inside. He's excellent inside. I would I would just throw the ball at him inside. So Cab, let's set the scene. PVI at home has never beaten Riken. They're at home tonight. They led for most of this game, close game, but right now it's eight to six in St. Mary Riken's favor. Both these teams, two of the teams in your top ten in the area. Setting the scene, so PVI now, what do they have? Obviously they have to score, but, but how do they go about that here? You gotta tr try to get a quick one, win the face off, go down, call a timeout, and, uh, and then get another one before the game ends, to get, get the tie before you and try to get into overtime. Three goals in 138, it's been done, but that's, that's quick, that's very quick. Look, look for them to run a, a play here. Uh, I'm watching them in the huddle, it looks like they're diagramming a play to uh, get a quick shot. Garrett, the goalie for uh, St. Mary's Riken, has just gotten hot though. I don't know if you uh, notice, I have him for seven or eight saves, yeah. but all of them, in the, I think in this quarter, most of them in this quarter, he's got about four or five in this quarter alone. Ignacic, the sophomore goaltender. So the crowd now getting into it. This is crunch time, 138 remaining PVI. Down by two, but they have possession. They're giving the ball to the freshman, Ryan O'Connor, which means it's going to be a play because they're not giving it to their uh, to Murph, who's on the crease. Look for him inside. So O'Connor now with possession. He swings it out to the top, looking for an opportunity, going at it quick. Nice defense Scott Primo by Riken. dodging here. It's Primo. And we have flag on the field. An opportunity, a shot. Oh, off the and pipe. A, that. Oh my gosh, that's Murphy too. That's what they wanted. That ball bounced right into his stick and he just rang it off the pipe. As the flies came out, looks like some of the players on the field stopped playing. Murphy scoops it up, well, shoots the, it right off the pipe. The rules are such an NCAA rules that you have to regain possession defensively to kill the penalty or knock it out of the box. And uh, they thought that ball was popping out of the box, but it actually just popped right into Murphy, Connor Murphy's stick. Hey folks, they need a quick goal here. One fifteen remaining. PVI down by two with possession. Watch Murphy inside. They need to attack He's open. Quick. He's open. There's Murphy with a shot. And score! Why don't they guard him on that? <laughs> oh, 
Okay, here we go now. PVI down by one. Score is eight to seven. St. Mary's Reichen, 108 remaining in this game. That's exactly what PVI needed to do. They needed to score quickly, and they did. Now, one minute remaining, but here it is right here. St. Mary's Reichen has dominated these face-offs. PVI needs to win this face-off and get offensive possession back. Well, I think Paul the Six won the last one. They're grabbing it with free hands in there. Paul the Six won the last face-off, and they're going to win this one. If he can pick it up. They left early. So they needed to. The Reichen and guy clear, left the box really early. That was So looking to clear is PVI. Very important here. Connor yeah. Murphy with the ball. They're going to get in the box and call a timeout. Hope. Here is Murphy. He's going to shoot. Shoots oh, now wide. they should call a timeout. 41 Make seconds remaining. Now they should call a timeout. And they call the timeout. Okay. 41 seconds remaining. 8 to 7. Reichen. PVI needed to score quickly. They did. They were down by two. Now they're down by one. They have possession. 41 seconds left. The last, the last play they, they they drew up worked. So where are they going to now? Well, you know they're going. You know who they're going to. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> does he have six or goals, or does he have five goals? I've, I've lost track. But if they if Riken doesn't do something to guard him on the crease, uh, that's going to be a huge mistake. And because you know they're going to force it inside to Connor right now. In the 1 4 1 formation, he's been getting open on the high crease and he doesn't seem to miss. And I think the only shot I've seen him miss has been that last shot he just took about two seconds ago, right before the uh, timeout was called. So, PVI, seven goals. Scott Primo, he has a goal for PVI. But hey, Connor Murphy, six goals. Six of the seven goals scored by the PVI Panthers, Connor Murphy has. He's got over, He's got 25 or more goals on the season. He had 19 coming in. The kid's off to a great start. The junior attack, he is committed to Rutgers. Let's see if he can, uh, this would be the most important goal of the game thus far, if he can, if he can put this one in. The crowd is, uh, is all fired up right now. The crowd on both sides are on their feet. 41 seconds. Folks, I will try to keep you informed of the time as the action happens on the field. All right, well. 24, number Connor, Connor Murphy is on the crease. So here we go, 35 seconds remaining for PVI. Yates, turnover. Preston Dabbs took the, took the ball away from uh, Scott Primo there. Short stick on short stick. It was a good matchup for Paul Six, but they just took it from him. So 19 seconds now remaining. Reichen in complete control now. They're going to have to send double teams and get the ball on the mat. There's 10 seconds. 10 seconds remaining. Need to, need, need to have something here. It's crunch time for PVI. We have a timeout. Five seconds remaining. Just throwing it up is Riken. Two seconds. One second remaining. And St. Mary's Riken will hold on. They will win this game 8 to 7. It's a, it's a quality, uh, quality win. It's a great game. St. Mary's Both teams played very well. Still has not lost to Paul the Six, but you gotta tip your hat, tip the tip your cap to the PVI Panthers. Played a fantastic game at the, for the whole game, missing one of their players, missing another one of their best players, gets injured during the game. Yeah. They played extremely well. Oh, I mean, Connor Murphy stepped up. He was a man in this game. He was on fire. I haven't seen a kid shoot the well that shoot the ball that well in a long time. It was, quite impressive. He was carrying the team offensively the entire game, especially when when Nick Carpenter, number five, went down with uh, the rolled ankle in the, in the first half or second quarter. What a ball game. All right, so let's take a look at the, the, the scores for PVI, for, for, let's go with St. Mary's Riken first. Connor Summers has two goals for St. Mary's Riken. Romar Dennis, he had three goals for Riken. Nathan Blondino also had three goals, and that was the scoring for St. Mary's Riken. On the other side, we just mentioned it, Connor Murphy with six goals for Paul the Sixth, And Scott Primo also had a goal. That's how you get your eight to seven win for St. Mary's Riken. Yeah, it was a great game. Like you said, I think the, the biggest differential was two goals at any point. It was a battle back and forth, and uh, the momentum shifted. It just shifted towards St. Mary's Reich in, in the end of the fourth quarter, and they, and they pulled out the win. So a, a big win for St. Mary's Reich, and they are undefeated in, they, they're undefeated so far in this season. PVI, that's their second, uh, drops their second loss of the year. Yeah, St. Mary's Reich is 5-0, great, great win. I mean, I think 
some of the players of the game to talk about for, for Riken that, that did well. I think Preston Dabbs played an incredible game, the face-off player, number 24. Not only did he win uh, eight or nine out of four, 14 or so face-offs, he also took the ball away there at the end of the game to seal the victory. Mm -hmm. He played tough, short-stick defense the whole night. He played very, very well. Talking about uh, the goalkeepers as well, great games. You saw some great games by Agnostic and Tool on the other side for PVI. Just uh, all in all, a, a very enjoyable game to watch. Yeah, it was close. It was exciting. It's Friday night. Lacks lights up here. I think that uh, this is a great, great early season game here for the Metro Lacks series. Metro Lacks series. This is the second game of the Metro Lacks series presented by the Washington Post. Dot com. Fantastic game here at the WCAC. Let's revisit real quick. Let's let's revisit your top ten after this game and see where where you think these play, these two teams now rank up. Well, as the game was going on, I quickly said it. I don't know if anyone heard. Gonzaga beat Georgetown Prep tonight. Just ended about 30 minutes ago, four to two over at Prep. That's an enormous victory for Coach O'Neill. We did their game two weeks ago. We were impressed by the way they uh, just dominated another IAC opponent in Bullis that night. Gonzaga has to be considered for the top spot. Um, I have St. Stephen's up there, but it, it very well could be uh, Gonzaga uh, after after this weekend. We'll see how St. Stephen's does tomorrow. St. Stephen's has prep next Tuesday, and prep's going to be angry, to say the least, after losing tonight. In a, in a few moments, we'll have uh... Leah Reich down on the field with Romar Dennis. He had three goals in this game. You mentioned you've known Romar for a while now. His athleticism, scoring that, scoring that eighth goal, putting Reich, uh, putting Reich in on top for the rest of the for, for the rest of the game. So how important was was uh, Romar Dennis in this game? Well, he and Nathan Blondino, who I think we're going to go to here, are both uh, Madlax juniors. Nathan's going to uh, West Point and. Uh, and Romar's going to Loyola. They both had outstanding games, and I'm very uh, impressed with the way they played this evening. So six yeah. goals between this two. Let's go down to Leah Reich. Hey, guys. I'm here with uh, highest point scorers for the game, three goals each with Nathan Blandino and Romar Dennis. Uh, so, guys, tell me a little bit about how you think your team played today. Well, I thought we played great. We uh, had a slow Fire start right. to begin with, but uh, after we got fired up, we played as a team. We came back in the end. Romar? The defense really stepped in, stepped up at the end, and uh, they held us in there. So what were some defining moments for you? How did you guys turn it around after that kind of tough first quarter? Uh, I mean, I think when we got on our goal streak at the, I mean, after they came out and scored two goals, and then at the very end of the game when uh, we, we came out and scored two goals, up, put us up by two, and then even though our defense let in one, we uh, kept composure and still played through. Quickly, what did Coach say to you guys at halftime that kind of like maybe fueled the fire a little bit? So it was all even, and it was uh, just up to who wanted the game more. So we came up, fired up, and uh, we went for all the ground balls. Well, congratulations, and have a good night. Back to the booth. Here we go. All right. Thank you, Leah all right, Reich. guys, we're going to get Coach here in a couple minutes. Uh, and I think he might have actually gone over to say congratulations to the Paul Six coach. But um, okay, wrap it up. We will just uh, maybe talk to him in a little bit, and if not, uh, have a good night. All right, Leah, thanks a lot. So that was uh, Leah Reich with our two players of the game, Blindino and Dennis. Huge game, great win for St. Mary's Reich, and they beat Paul the Sixth eight to seven. Just a great game for uh, for everybody here in the WCIC. Well, those two guys both had hat tricks. I didn't realize that, but Leah pointed that out. That's. Two top players stepping up in a big game. We talked about impact players. Who's going to have a big game? Those kids surely did. Um, and that's going to, they're going to carry St. Mary's Reich in this season. St. Mary's Reich, and like I said, is now 5-0 and undefeated. Uh, have to be considered one of the top five teams in the metro area for sure. Folks, you just watched the Washington Post Metro Lack Series. We have another great game coming up here real soon. Yeah, next Tuesday, Georgetown Prep at St. Stephen's. I have St. Stephen's on my uh, top 10 as number one. Uh, Prep will probably drop to number two, three, or four, or five. We'll see what happens there. But still, uh, I wouldn't want to play Georgetown Prep and Coach Giblin after a loss. <laughs> well, that will do it here for us, for Leah Reich down on the field. Cab Maddox, I'm Paul Frommelt. Guys, thanks for watching the Washington Post Metro Lax Series.